you ever been told that you're wheat intolerant? And does it just make you sad that you can't enjoy whole grain breads? Well, I think I just might have a solution that'll help you enjoy them every day, like hundreds of other people who are doing the same thing. Have you ever heard of sprouting your grains to make your flour? Did you know that when you sprout grains, it actually changes the whole chemical makeup of the grain, and it fools your body into thinking that it's eating a vegetable instead of a starch? What makes it hard to digest wheat sometimes is that it has a protein hull, and the protein is really hard for your body sometimes to break down. So by soaking the wheat, it actually creates a little sprout, and then it opens up all kinds of vitamins and more nutrition in your bread. And when you dry those spr that sprouted wheat and then make your flour, then you're ready for a much better digestible bread. It's just a really simple four-step process. And while it may seem like a lot of steps, if you are really wanting to eat whole grain breads and have been told that you're wheat intolerant, this is gonna be the simplest thing for you to do. Here we go. We'll start with just some canning jars. I take about three of these and I'll fill each one about two thirds of the way full with my grains, whether it's wheat or a combination of spelt, wheat, kamut, whatever grains that you'd like to use. About two thirds of the way full and then I'll fill my jars with water. Now I wanna make sure that I get all those grains clear at the bottom, so just fill it up to the top. And the key with this is that you're gonna let it sit for 24 hours. That way, the wheat will absorb the water and it will fill the whole jar. Just let it sit there on your countertop. After 24 hours that the wheat has expanded, you're gonna take off the lid and there really won't be a lot of water left in the jar. You'll simply take a piece of cheesecloth or even a clean stocking and you'll just put it over the top with an elastic band. At this point, you'll wanna take your jars Put them in a bowl upside down so they have a chance to drain. Of course, you won't see all this water coming out because it'll already be absorbed into the wheat. But you want to rinse your, your wheat about twice a day and then put the lid back on. Put your little cheesecloth. That will allow it to start to, to sprout. And in only two days, you're going to have these beautiful little wheat sprouts. Now, they don't have to be long at all. They're just tiny little sprouts. And you can see that they've got these little tiny white hairs. That's as much as you need. And do you see how it's filled my whole jar? Now remember, for three loaves of bread, you're gonna need about three of these jars full of sprouted wheat. Next comes the other step, and this is what's really fun. Get out your dehydrator. I use the Nesco American Harvest uh, dehydrator. It's, it has eight trays, but it only takes me about four trays to dehydrate my wheat. And what I do is I just dehydrate my wheat overnight because it takes about 12 hours. And be sure to use one of these mesh liners. If you don't use a mesh liner, your wheat is going to fall through the cracks of your dehydrating tray and it's just going to create a mess. So make sure to have one of these on your dehydrating trays. You can also do this in your oven if you don't have a dehydrator, but it just seems a little more lengthy. So just take your wheat and carefully just dump it onto your dehydrating tray. Now you wanna make sure not to crowd the tray too much. Remember, you'll use about four trays um, filling all these trays full of your sprouted wheat. And there you go. When you're done, in the morning you'll get up and you'll see that they're all dry. This is our sprouted wheat that's dry and ready to go into our um, into our grinder. And you know, the greatest thing, you can't see these little hairs anymore. If you look really close, you can. But it doesn't ruin the integrity of the wheat whatsoever. It's just ready to go, and now it's chemically changed so that your body can really digest it well. And I have several trays here. So the next step is to take this wheat, make sure it's really, really dry and crisp. And even if you over dry it, that's okay. Just don't under dry it, because if it's too wet, it'll gum up your machine. And then you go to your, your um, wheat grinder over here and you're just gonna put it in your grinder. Now let me show you a little trick. When you take these off the tray, just grab the little mesh trays like this, make a little scoop, and then just get a bowl and pour them inside the bowl. See how much easier that is? And you're just, well, I'm gonna show you right here. It'll go right through the tray. But if, if you can even just dump it right into your grinder this way, you'll be able to make your flour. Now just put it in your grinder. It'll grind really quickly, just as if you were making regular wheat bread. It'll get in your hopper and then make your wheat bread. There's nothing tastier than delicious whole wheat bread. And you can really use any grains. 
but you know what? This is a great way to be able to incorporate those grains and enjoy whole grains every day, even though you've been told that you might be wheat intolerant. It's just a little trick that goes a long way.